Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gareth Major and this is a review of the Tier 5 British Premium Cruiser HMS London. Uh, currently available for 10,000 doubloons with no end date in sight. Now this is a game of Domination on Trident, a Tier 5 and 6 game. Genevi, Fubuki, Aoba, Leander, York, Algeria. Then we have a Pite of Elik and a Bayern working in the division and then we have a Gneisenhau. Spawn on the left centre, move into the left. Now London is also available in two bundle packs for this week only. Uh, one bundle pack is 16,350 doubloons and that uh, contains one UK commander crate, 3 million credits, 20 type 4 camos and 20 of each common booster flag. There's also another bundle pack which is 19,900 doubloons and that contains one memorial flag, two UK commander crates, 10 promotion orders, 3 million credits, 20 type 4 camos and 20 of each rare booster flag. Now out of the two packs, um, I wouldn't say either of them are ecstatically worthwhile. Um, maybe the 19,900 might be a bit more worthwhile uh, considering the uh, per permanent kind of flag that you can use on any of your ships uh, if that tickles your fancy. But otherwise I'd probably just say get HMS London as she is. Now HMS London is a county class cruiser and Draken Vanilla has done a 5 minute guide. Um, it is 8 minutes and 42 seconds long and it will be on the end screen as well as carded top right now. <coughs> now, uh, comparing HMS London to the Tech Tree Tier 5 cruisers, survivability, she has a highest HP base and HP pool. Uh, HP base is just how much HP she comes with normally, and HP pool is how much HP she has base plus all her repair parties. Her armor bands uh, appear to be reasonable, however from armor views uh, available it does look like she has a quite a lot of thin armor plating uh, protecting her all over with only the majority of the thicker armor being located at the uh, Citadel. She, now she does have the joint lowest torpedo reduction, uh, however um, <clears throat> having a torpedo reduction of 4% is better than having a no torpedo reduction at all. Going on to artillery, she has 8 8 inch guns in 4 dual gun turrets. Um, these are situated A turret, B turret super firing, X turret super firing and Y turret. Uh, so you have two turrets uh, forward and two turrets out, uh, so you have a nice spread of turrets which mean that um, regardless of which way you're sailing to or from the enemy, you will always be able to bring at least two turrets to bear onto the enemy target. Now these guns do have the joint below average range of 14.5 kilometers, and the joint sh longest uh, reload time of four, uh, 15 seconds. Now you do have a decent turret traverse speed and you do have the second highest HE shell damage and the second best fire chance along with an above average AP shell damage. However due to the number of guns and your reload speed you are looking at a poor DPM for your HE and AP along with a lower, well lowest fires per minute chance. Going on to torpedoes, you have two quadruple launchers, one per side. Um, now these launchers have the longest reload time per launcher and the second longest reload time per tube. Now your torpedoes do have um, high damage, um, short detectability, and a below average range and speed. Um, so that's some nice things there to really take away from it. Uh, maneuverability you do have a below average speed you have a second joint largest turning circle along with uh, an average rudder shift just wondering where that Leander's gone yeah I thought he's gonna get torpedoes up concealment uh, you're better than average by sea and air and you're slightly worse than average from firing in smoke, but that's just due to the larger uh, signature of the 8 inch guns. Now, 
Now going on to consumables, you do have two smoke screens. These have a 15 second duration, uh, which is how long it takes to lay a smoke screen, and a 99 second dispersion, that's how long the smoke screen is going to sit around for. It also has a 240 second reload. Should be alright here, I hope. Gonna use one of those repair buttons though. Um, now, the smoke screen is obviously the same as the Leander and the Exeter. Now, you also have three sonars. Um, now, these are the same as the British Destroyers, and it has a duration of 180 seconds and a reload of 120 seconds. Um, it detects ships at a range of 3.5 kilometers and it detects torpedoes at a range of 2.5 kilometers. Um, so in comparison to the Tech Tree Cruisers, oh, um, it has less range but has a longer duration and a shorter reload time over the other cruisers. Now you also have two repair parties and the nice thing about these repair parties is that they are pretty much monster repair parties. They heal 553 HP per second for 20 seconds. Um, so that means each repa repair party will heal in the area of 11,060 HP. And that means from the two of them you will be able to heal 22,120 HP. Now, as per normal, modules will be down in the description, but I should let you know that I have taken Aiming Systems Module 1 and Stingers Module 2. The reason being is for um, the other modules, um, so versus the Aiming Systems, you do have uh, like secondary module and uh, the other one is your main battery module. The main battery module, module improves your turret traverse speed at the cost of rate of fire, which I don't think is quite worthwhile in the uh, London, to be totally honest. And then uh, versus steering gears, uh, you do have damage control, but at the moment damage control doesn't quite seem to be the meta of the game as yet. Also down in the description will be the commander build. Um, now for this uh, review, I have basically just focused on going for like normal bog standard commander that I suspect quite a lot of people are going to go for. And I'll save my uh, wacky crazy commander build that I would normally prefer to play uh, for the let's play. Now, when it comes to the comparison of London next year, I want to save that for the Let's Play as well. Um, because although it's easy to identify um, a lot of the differences based on the stats, um, there's a lot more differences actually when it comes to playing them and the individual elements of the ships. So um, I have been doing testing, I, I will confess to that. Um, when I first got to London, I think every third game was in the Exeter, just to like make sure I was still referring back to her every now and then, just to see what she's like in comparison. Um, and I'll save my summary for the Let's Play, which will be Friday's video. Now that leaves only the Pytal Velik left on the enemy team. So we're just going to, oh there we go, very nice. So let's have a look at the end screen. So we managed to get ourselves 71,000 damage with 3 kills. Um, and yeah, no, that seems seems all right across the board there. Yeah, it came in, came at the top. That's fair enough. And economy wise, um, obviously worth highlighting that because she's a tier five premium ship, her ship service cost is obviously discounted in comparison to the tech tree ships, uh, which enables her to obviously make a lot more credits and therefore does make her quite a nice money maker at the end of the day. But all in all, that was quite an enjoyable game, and I think I actually got the review spot on that time. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to subscribe and check out some of our other content carded on screen now. If you're already a subscriber, I'd like to say thank you very much, guys and girls, for your support and contributions to the channel. As always, you can send in your own game captures to the email address in the description down below, along with the ship modules and the commander build used during this video. Also down in the description is a link to Patreon, should you wish to support the channel. I'd like to say thank you to the patrons whose lovely names are appearing on screen now. Until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port.